Hey there, welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk about SvelteKit. So SvelteKit is the uh, meta framework I've been using for the past couple of months and I think it's amazing. It's the reason or part of a reason why I wanted to start this channel and probably one of the reasons uh, I am doing web development again because I did a long break in web development and now I'm starting to do it again and it's fun with Svalkid. So yeah, this is kind of uh, the good, the bad and the ugly video and I want to begin with the good. So the good are server files. Um, in React we got server components I think, but at the time they got released I was already using Svalkid so I didn't really care much about that. But I think the idea of having server files is very cool because um yeah they kind of they load you data before your page runs and stuff and they can do cool server actions and it's not like kind of it's not that abstract like uh react is but i would probably like to try out these react components uh react server components um yeah so this is like my first plus point. My second plus point is kind of not specific to Svelkid. It's uh, the UI, UI library, especially Skeleton UI. This is the UI library I've been using for all my Svelkid projects, and I think it's awesome. It's built on top of Tailwind, which helped me a lot to port my app to Svelkid. The pre-built classes, it has like styling code blocks or styling, I don't know, block quotes and all that stuff. I think it's very amazing. It's an amazing tool and I just love it. So yeah, that is uh, the UI library. Uh, of course, there are tons of other UI libraries. I think Shatsian, um, Svelte is also another UI library. I definitely want to try out. So next off is the router. So I think I addressed this in my Wolfbricks video, but the router in React is basically, it's not native but it's with this kind of wrapper library around React. It's, uh, I got the job done with React Writer DOM. And the way I would do this is in my app.js, I would have kind of my layout with my footer and my, no, my header and my footer. And between these would be all the routes. And this, these of course would be dynamic. And yeah, that's basically how routing worked. I would predefine every single route. Um, in SvelteKit, we don't have that. In SvelteKit, it's more of a file-based router, which is idea I pretty like. Uh, you can do nested routing and like optional parameters and stuff. It's crazy. Like in CoDoodle and in Wolfbricks, I got, uh, I used optional, no, not optional, dynamic routes and stuff. It's amazing. It's very cool. And the next thing is speed. My apps load super fast. Um, in production, it's like, okay, well, I need to connect to the Netlify servers and then they need kind of to connect to Torso and stuff. So it's kind of a little bit slower, but overall, I think it's still very, very fast. And I also really like the fact that if I hover over a link, in my Svelkit application, it will preload the content on this link, which makes it very useful if you don't want to um, kind of uh, use uh, loading states too much. Uh, because in React, I use them all the time for my Firebase block. I use these all the time. Um, so yeah, that is that, of course. So let's go to the bad animation libraries. I know Svelte got its own like view transitions API and other transition and stuff and I could do normal animation but in React I had this very cool uh, framer motion by Framer of course and I very like to use it so um, for example barmates.netlify.app is powered by um, framer motion and it's just amazing to use in my opinion. It's very intuitive and very cool, and you can do all kind of cool stuff with um, Framer Motion. Definitely go check that out if you're 
a React Dev and want to spice your UIs up with uh, some animations. So next off is the ecosystem. I know this is gonna probably piss off a few Svelte users, but I think the ecosystem in React was generally a lot better. Uh, this animation library is one part of it. I just in React, you just in React you just have such a giant ecosystem and so many libraries which support you. React Writer DOM, React, I don't know, I don't even know that. React form data form whatever. It's just crazy. And you don't really have that with Svelte. But what I think, so there's hope. I think the Svelte ecosystem is very uh, evolving. And the last part is only one component profile. So in React, I didn't know that, but yeah, you can do multiple components profile. So I would have, I don't know, cart.tsx, and in cart.tsx, I would have the card and one of the items of the card, and not just like card, and then another component was card item and stuff. No, I wouldn't have that. I just have card and have all the child components down the tree or down in the in the same file, which is uh, very cool. And we don't have that in Svelte. We can only one component per file, which is okay. I think some things, I think there's a concept in programming. I don't know how it's called exactly, but I think it says that things that belong together should be put together or something like that. I think it's, I think it's pretty much that. And yeah, so I can really do that as well, kid. So yeah, now let's go to the ugly. And the ugly, I actually want to showcase you. So this is the code doodle code space. Um, it's one of my largest, I think it could be even larger than Wolf Breaks, but it's a big project. We got many routes in here. Um, a little bit of shallow routing, not that crazy shallow routing. But what if I open all these folders? Look at what happens. Oh, wow. I mean, this is a lot of page. Yeah, this is a lot of page files. And now if I were to use React, let me quickly. Now, if I were to use uh, React, I would just have pages and components. And in pages, we would have that stuff. And I'll actually sync that up. I would just have this stuff. And it would be a bit more cleaner. I don't know if I have a demonstration for multi components per file somewhere in here, maybe in home. Yeah, here we have home. And home contains all these child components, all these child components. Um, so we got that. So yeah, I think the we can name our files whatever we want in React, but in Svelte it's just all these page or these layouts. Okay, I don't, I only have two layouts, but it can get pretty messy if you have too many pages and layouts, which is my number one pain point with SvelteKit. It makes stuff very hard to find. This is pretty much my summary about SvelteKit and why I love it, why I don't love it so much. I wouldn't, I would not dare to say I hate it because SvelteKit is just genius. It's, I love SvelteKit. It's very cool. So yeah, that was the video. If you liked it, please subscribe and hit the like button and we're gonna see us next time.